We had no idea that there was this media social storm brewing outside. Can you please tell the jury why you're here today? Ms. Hurd accused me of abuse. My ex-husband is suing me. Brutal, cruel. This is humiliating for any human being to go through. And all false. Camille, Debt versus Heard. what was it like for you to go back and relive that trial via the docu-series? It was fascinating. I mean, just to see the way that Emma put together that docu-series, I found it really interesting. She utilized the court testimony in a way that told a really compelling, truthful account of what took place inside those four walls in Virginia. And, you know, there was what was taking place within those four walls, and then there was the world outside. There was the social media firestorm. What was it like for you really being at the center of that? You know, it's interesting, and that's a great question, because while we were there inside doing our jobs, we didn't really understand the impact this case was having on social media all over the world. Yeah. You know, towards the end, we started getting messages or people sending us things, but really, for the most part, we had no idea that there was this media social storm brewing outside. I don't think I've seen anybody do a better job. So uh, go Camille Vasquez. So you were unaware that there were essentially millions of people talking about you every day online. We really were unaware, and, and it was I'm grateful that we weren't aware at the time because we did have a job to do and we were so incredibly busy during that time that we didn't have the time to focus on what was happening outside of our war rooms and that courtroom. It was an act of profound cruelty, not just to Mr. Depp, but to true survivors of domestic abuse. For Ms. Hurd to hold herself out as a public figure representing domestic abuse, it was false, it was defamatory, and it caused irreparable harm. What was it like for you watching yourself in court? What I see is actually somebody that has always believed in her client mm. and a, a true advocate. I, I see my expressions to the evidence that's it's coming forward, and I very much knew the case very, very well. I knew the evidence and I was advocating at all times for my client. Was there one key moment when you knew that you'd won the jury over? I don't think that we could ever be 100% sure, but there were some key moments during the trial. Johnny Depp's testimony, I think, was a key moment when he was finally, after six years, able to tell his side of the story. I, I felt the responsibility of clearing the record as uh, the only way that I could get that I could get to the point where I could speak um, has really taken this full six years, and it's been six years of trying times. For six years, what we had were what we say unfounded allegations made by his ex-wife Amber Heard against him and no response public or otherwise from Johnny Depp until he filed this lawsuit and he was able to testify there six years later. I also think that her cross-examination which I had the honor of doing on behalf of Mr. Depp was a pivotal moment. Um, okay. Being able to confront her with her own words was so important to Mr. Depp and to our overall strategy. Sitting here today, you have not donated the seven million dollars, donated, not pledged, donated the seven million dollars divorce settlement to charity. I use pledge and donation synonymous with one another. They, but I don't. Miss Heard, I don't use it synonymously. That's how donations are paid. Miss Heard, respectfully, that's not my question. Pledge versus donate. What's the difference? Explain that for us, please. And also, do you feel that that was a pretty important moment? I think it was a key moment and yeah. it's something that the docu-series highlighted. I think that while donations are usually pledged at the beginning and then the payment is made after, they are not used synonymously, mm. as Ms. Heard tried to say. And the real issue that we had in this case was that 
for six years, Ms. Heard had implied and told the world and used the word donated versus pledged, that she had donated and implied that she had paid the $7 million to charity. And when confronted with it, she tried to back out of that statement. And the truth was, she had testified under oath and had publicly said she had donated the money, implying she had paid it, mm -hmm. when in fact she hadn't paid anywhere near $7 million. This is what Amber carried in her purse for the entire relationship with Johnny Depp. This was what she used. She became very adept at it. You're going to hear the testimony from Amber about how she had to mix the different colors for the different days of the bruises as they were as they developed in the different coloring and how she would use these to touch those up to be able to cover those. One unexpected uh, big talking point in all of this was the Milani makeup palette, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Amber acknowledged that there was this palette. She said that this was what she used during during the time of their relationship. How did you originally find out that that makeup palette was in fact not even on the market when Johnny and Amber were still together? It's a fascinating story. Mm -hmm. uh, Milani actually came forward and said that they didn't make this exact palette until many years after Amber and Johnny were together. So it, it's something that spread on social media like a firestorm. And um, while we definitely learned about it and you know couldn't help but notice that that video came out and Milani went on record saying that this palette didn't exist, we didn't feel that it was relevant or admissible evidence that we could bring forward. Okay. Um, so that's why we didn't raise it during the trial. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. Now when you look back sort of holistically at this entire process, is there anything you would have done differently? How do you feel about how everything played out from your end? No, I mean, I think we did the best job we could for our client. We were over prepared for this case and we believed in him and we believed in his innocence and we were determined to show that, not just to the jury, but to the public. You know, we talked a little bit about the social media firestorm. There was a lot of venom directed at Amber during this trial. Why do you think that was? Well, in response to that, I, I always say that social media and the world was really reacting to the evidence that was being presented in that courtroom. And so I, I think that the reaction was the barometer for the court of public opinion. The court of public opinion was saying, we don't find her credible. We're not believing these allegations. Even though I think that there was a real desire to believe her, to believe the woman, which is often the case, mm -hmm. but I think we were able to establish and show that people shouldn't be guilty by accusation. Now, you know, so many people followed this trial in real time, and now we've got this docu-series. Time has passed, the dust has settled somewhat, arguably. Um, what do you hope that people, or expect that people might take away from this docu-series, from what you've seen? From what I've seen, I, I think, and I hope that people take away the fact that the social media firestorm that took place was reacting to the evidence that was taking, that was happening in real time during that trial. And that's what the public was reacting to. It was real evidence, admissible evidence that was taking place in those four walls mm -hmm. in that courtroom.